Hi everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, I am going to show you that how I have found a critical vulnerability in Univer Routers that can allow anyone or any attacker to log in into the Univer Routers dashboard without having any credential at all. Right? So let's try to see that how we can do this. But before going to this video, I just wanted to thank you all from the bottom of my heart because we have finally reached over 16,000 subscribers. It has been a really amazing journey for me. So I am really grateful to each one of you who have kept supporting me when I have zero subscriber and now I am over 16,000 subscriber. I know it is not very big uh, for most of you guys, but for me, it is like more than enough, you know, because when I started, uh, I never thought that I will be able to get these many subscribers, right? So yeah, again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And let us try to see that how we can uh, find these kind of vulnerabilities that I'm going to show you. So let's see how we can do that. Now, the very first thing that we need to do is we need to open the dashboard of the router and we're going to analyze that how this application is working, right? We're going to understand how the flow of this application is working of the router. And then we're going to see what are the possible uh, scenarios in which we can break it. Okay. So I'm going to just log in into my router over here. You can see this is the routers. Uh, you can say login panel right over here. And let me just see if I'm, yeah, so I'm connected with my burp suit as well. So let us try to log in into this application. So I know the username and password. So I'm just going to log in as it is. And now I'm going to intercept the request because we want to see that what is happening if we provide the right credential, right? I'm going to log in. And you can see this is the post request going on to this particular endpoint of the router. And we have this inside the body, right? Let's try to intercept the response, what we are getting back from the uh, router's server, right? You can see that it is saying that success and this is something that we're getting over here. And let's forward this. Let's turn off the intercept. And as you can see right over here, we are logged into the uh, dashboard of this particular router, right? Let us try to see that how it is actually handling the uh, authentication part, like what is happening after the authentication. So if you see directly, we are actually redirected to the dashboard. Let's try to see, let's say that if I'm going to the application, let's see which type of request is getting sent along with the request. What are the additional things that are getting sent? Like the cookies, uh, headers and all those things, right? Let's try to click on application. And if you notice closely over here, you can see that everything is uh, right here in the place. You can see there's user agent, there's uh, origin, there's this post data over here. But if you think closely, there's one very important header which is actually missing, right? And the header which is missing is this particular header, which is cookies, right? Now, normally, you know that if we want to differentiate between an authenticated or an, a non-authenticated user, what we do is we try to validate the user with the cookies, right? But as you can see, there is no cookies present onto this particular request, which is getting sent, right? So which means that this particular application is not relying on the cookies, right? So what are the other things that uh, on which this particular router is relying on that we need to figure out, right? Because you see, this is the very strange part. Right. And now see, this is a very important part that you need to understand your application in depth so that you will be able to find the loopholes or the vulnerabilities. If you want to dive deep into how we can do this kind of thing, how we can do proper reconnaissance, then go ahead and check out my the art of web application reconnaissance course in which I have shown everything in detail, like how we can do domain or subdomain enumeration, how we can dive deep into the target and all those things. Right. So if you're interested, then go ahead and check it out. The link of the course is given in the description. Right. And currently, as you can see, there is no cookies header present over here. Right. Now I'm giving you five seconds. Think what are the other ways on to which this application is relying for the authentication part, because this application should have some kind of way to know that which device is logged in, right? Which device has given the right credential and which device is not logged in into the router dashboard. Right. Let's forward this for now. Another interesting thing that I wanted to show you is that you can see that I am currently logged in over here, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open another browser. Inside this browser, I'm going to type 192.168.1.1 again. Okay. And as you can see right over here, it is showing me this dashboard to log in again, right? But if you see that if I copy the link, the link which contains the authenticated endpoints uh, location, right? If I copy this and if I paste this into the new tab, 
you can notice that I'm not logged in into this router uh, into this uh, routers panel in this browser right but again if you see that I'm if I'm going to paste it and hit enter you can see that I'm seeing everything which has been showing over here right which means that there is some weird kind of authentication mechanism uh, in use right currently we can see that there is some kind of uh, you can say logic issue over here right but we need to figure it out that what is this logic issue and how we can actually break through it right so I'm giving you five seconds what is the issue right over here that you can think of you can just let me know in the comment section and let's try to see that if you are able to guess it correct or not okay so five four three two one okay so based on these things since we know that the cookies are not in use right there is no such kind of uh, authentication mechanism like session and all those things are in use so there could be another way of how this application might be uh, doing its authentication flow right let's try to see this in a small diagram so that we'll understand it better so now let us try to see that what could be the possible authentication mechanism this particular router is using and how we can exploit it right let's try to understand the uh, uh, the authentication flow that what may be happening in the backend okay let us say that we have a router over here so i'm just going to draw a simple router and please don't mind my drawing right so let's say this is the router through which three devices are connected okay and let us assume that two devices are connected so we have this device i'm going to draw a computer let's say this is the device uh, m1 okay let's say this device is connected to this router apart from this device there is another device which is let us say an android phone okay so this is the android phone right and since we are connected with the router so the router is going to assign us a private ip address right let us assume that the ip address for this machine m1 is 192.168.1.3 and for this android phone we have this ip address assigned by the router which is 192.168.1.5 okay now assuming that the machine m1 tried to log in into the router's dashboard in the router's uh, admin panel and the machine m1 provided the right credentials okay in that case let us say that the auth authentication is succeed or authentication is uh, verified successfully in that case the router what the router may be doing is that the router is storing the ip address of that particular machine let's say that this machine uh, provided the right credential okay right credentials in that case what the router may be doing is that in the backend it is going to save the ip address right which is 192.168.1.3 right let me just maximize it so 192.168.1.3 right so this machine this m1 machine tried to log in into the router's admin panel they provided the right password that's why the router saved the ip address the private private ip address of this particular machine and then allowed them to do further action right now let, let us say that this particular machine m1 is trying to access the application or any other endpoint that requires some kind of authentication in that case let us say that it is trying to change the uh, let's say the uh, wi-fi name right ssid let us say that it is trying to change the SSID. In that case, what may be happening is that in the backend, first the router is going to check whether this particular machine is authenticated or not. So it's going to take the IP address of this machine, which is M1, and it is going to verify whether this IP address is the same IP address which is saved over here. And since both of these IP addresses are same, 192.168.1.3 and the saved IP address, of the machine which provided the right uh, credential is the same 192.168.1.3 the router will think that okay this is the machine who provided the right credential since their ip address is same so it will allow this machine to change the i change the ssid or the wi-fi name right now let us try to see what will happen if the android phone try to do the same thing let us say that the android phone is trying to change the uh, ssid okay or trying to see the admin panel right or admin 
spanner. In that case, what is going to happen is router is going to first of all take the IP address of the Android phone, which is 192.168. 1.5 and then it is going to verify whether this particular machine is authenticated to change the SSID or view the admin panel. It's going to see whether this IP address is present in the list or not. And as you can see, the IP address of the machine which is authenticated is not the same as the IP address of, uh, IP address of the Android phone which is trying to access the admin panel or change the SSID. In this scenario, what it's going to do is it's going to block the request or simply say that you are not authorized or you are not authenticated to log in or to see or to do this action, right? So this kind of uh, implementation is known as IP based, uh, you can say IP based uh, authentication, right? IP based authentication. Now this uh, authentication mechanism itself is a very dangerous practice because any user or any attacker can simply spoof the IP address, right? Let's say that there is an attacker with the machine uh, M2. Sorry, let's say yeah, M2. Okay. So what the attacker can do is attacker can scan the network, right? And by scanning the network, they will be able to see all the IP address of all the devices which are connected. And they can simply just rotate their IP address one by one to see which of this IP address is actually logged in into the routers, right? Let us say that the M2 device, the attacker's device, spoofed the IP address of M1. So now it will have this IP address, right? Now, if the attacker is trying to change the SSID, right? The router is going to see whether the IP address of M2 is the same IP address of the machine, which is logged in already, right? And since in this case, the IP address is same because we have spoofed the IP address, it will allow it to perform all type of action, which should be done to only the users who are providing the right credentials. Right. So this is the reason why IP based authentication is not very much secure and we can easily bypass it. So if this application or if this router is actually handling this uh, uh, authentication with this IP based authentication mechanism, we may be able to bypass it by using the IP spoofing method. Right. We can also confirm this that this router is, is indeed using this particular method because we saw that no matter what browser we used, Right, we can easily able to access the uh, admin panel if we have logged in into any one router in the same machine. Right, so there is a high possibility since we know that there is no cookies. Right, there is no cookies, and we can access the admin panel from anywhere in the browser once we have logged in. So this is a high sign of uh, this particular uh, this particular router may be using the IP based uh, authentication mechanism. Right. Let us try to see that how we can uh, practically exploit this scenario and how we can take over account. I hope that you have understood it till now that how we can do it. Well, let's try to see it in the action. So now let us try to demonstrate whatever we have seen in the previous uh, diagram. Right. So as you can see, let us assume that this is the victim's machine. And over here, I'm going to log in. Uh, I'm just going to log in with my credential. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I am going to copy the request of any auth authenticated endpoint, right? So we know all of these things will come after we give the valid credential. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the intercept and then I'm going to select any one of these. For example, let's select this one. Okay. And you can see this is the request going on. So this request is only accepted if the uh, given request is coming from an authenticated device, right? I'm going to send this to repeater and just turn off the intercept. Once I'll click send, you'll see what happened is that we're getting the JSON data, right? Of all the information about the target, right? As you can see. So we are going to assume that this is the victim's machine. And over here, we have our Kali Linux machine, which is up and running, right? And in this machine, we're going to spoof the IP address of the victim's machine. And we're going to see whether we are actually able to, uh, you know, get the data without uh, having any credential at all, right? So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to copy everything from here. Okay. So this is the request body and I'm going to open the terminal in my attackers machine. And over here, I'm just going to type nano, uh, let us say request dot text. And I'm going to paste everything over here, right? So we're just going to hit this request on our workflow and we're going to see whether we are able to 
uh, see the request uh, after spoofing the IP address or not, right? So let us try to see what will happen. I'm just going to maximize this one now. And over here, let us try to open our browser. Uh, you can see this is our browser which is up and running again. I can see that if we try 192.168.1.1, you'll see that it will uh, not allow us to uh, like go to the admin panel directly, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn on the intercept. I'm going to capture this request. I'm going to send this to repeater, okay? And I'm going to replace this body with the body which we have copied, okay? I'm going to copy everything. So control plus shift plus C. Uh, let us paste it right over here. We can just add a P over here. Let us try to send this request and let us see that what will happen. You can see that it is saying logout. Obviously, because this is a different machine, right? So we need to know the IP address of the machine which is already logged in. So I'm going to close this one for now. And you can see my current IP address is uh, 192.168.1.148. And the victim's IP address, which you want to spoof, uh, we need to check that one. So if I type IP config, uh, you can see we are connected with wireless networks. So this is the IP address 192.168.1.22, right? Let us try to change the IP address. We are going to change our attacker's IP address to this one. And then we're going to see what will happen. Okay. So I'm going to open Kali Linux over here. Let's right click over here. Let's click on edit connections. Uh, we're going to select the wired connection yes go to settings let's go to ipv4 we're going to change this to manual and we're going to click quickly add the ip address which is 192.168.1.22 right the net marks was 225.225.225.0 the gateway was 192.168.1.1 right and once we have configured everything, let's try to click on save. Let's exit this and let us try to reconnect with our network. Okay. Now this time you'll see what will happen. If I try to send this request, you can see we're getting nothing. Let's try to send this request continuously. And you see that we are getting everything, every data which was present on this authenticated endpoint, right? Which is not supposed to be accessible. And sometimes we can actually uh like you can see sometimes it will not show you the data like it will show you the raw data or nothing why because there is a conflict right but the point is that we are able to see the data which should be hidden from us because we don't know the valid credential and since we are able to see the data we can actually modify the data as well and we can do pretty much everything that the authenticator user or the user which has provided which is provided the right credential is able to do Right. So this was a vulnerability which I demonstrated and uh, for which I got a zero day vulnerability CVE. Right. So I hope that you've understood it. I hope you have understood that how we can find a vulnerability. Right. So if you want to dive deep into how we can do all those things, you can check out my courses. And I have over 100 plus videos already on my YouTube channel. You can go ahead and check it out. You can learn more about it. Right. So, yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure to let me know if you have any doubts if you have any issues feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section also do join our telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest latest trends and technologies going under cyber security as well as web development and now with that being said keep learning keep hacking and thank you so much for watching